Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the It's Obvious Podcast. This is episode 208. My name is Garrett Drake. I'm joined across the internet by Jacob Alka, one of my best friends on planet Earth. Jacob, how are you? I'm good, man. Um, a little bit late, but uh, nonetheless, we're here and we're giving you great and beautiful and sexy and uh, quaint Emphasis on sexy. what you deserve, a new episode of this podcast. Yeah, absolutely. We can't thank you guys enough for tuning in. As always, 208 episodes, Jacob. Every time I stop and reflect on how many times we've done this, it's quite astounding. Granted, we're nowhere near, say, the Joe Rogan podcast where I think he's nearing 1,500 at this point, if not more. So i got a ways to go till we reach that milestone. But 200 episodes, man, I'm still proud of us. And uh, I'm glad we still have uh, a bunch of great friends from the community tuning in and supporting us as we go along. I hope you all had a wonderful week. I certainly had a great week, Jacob. Tell me how your week was. It was good. Um, it was a long week. Um, lots of work. Um, lots of not a lot of free time, unfortunately. Um, going back to Joe Rogan, though, he uploads every day. So if we have any hopes into catching up with him, we need to upload a podcast every single day. That and he also interviews multiple people a day. I think True. he records it. At, I think at most, maybe three episodes a day, maybe more. Well, I don't think he less. does them every day. I think he just backlogs them, you know. Right. But still, now, can you imagine like doing this podcast and then say like in an hour or two doing another one? Uh, if that was all I did, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I could do that if we had to. I'd be up yeah. for that. Like if we if we did this and then an Ask IOG, for example. Right. But it's hard to do when it's 1030 at night uh, on a Monday. But um. Regardless, uh, I'm happy to be here with you, Jacob. Did you do anything exciting this week? I know you and I had lunch this past week. We didn't did, we? Was that yeah. last Thursday? We could start with that. Um, what was it called? Pokey? Yeah, Pokey. Poke? We, went to, uh, <laughs> we went to, I think it's called Pokey Circle or Circle Pokey, one of the two. I think it was called Circle Pokey. But How'd you feel about it? It was delicious. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to have had you just bestow that experience upon me because uh, I think it changed my life a little bit. I, that's uh, how I, I felt. Jacob. I never knew I could eat such tasty and fresh food, you know, that close. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I um I'm glad that um it lived up at least somewhat to the hype that I projected on the previous episode because I got really excited about it obviously. I I uh thoroughly enjoy it myself. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we could have that uh, romantic afternoon together and share some fresh fish. For sure. And I think we mentioned that we were maybe going to go have pizza this week if we're still going. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're going to go to Antico on Thursday. I think I'll be, let me see. I don't, I'll have to double check when I'm landing. I'm going to San Francisco mm. tomorrow. I'll be back Thursday. So hopefully uh, our date can work out as we had planned because what time's your return Jacob flight? is to die for. Uh, I can't remember. That's why I got to double check. I think I might be back last I checked just in time for us to eat. Mm, we'll see. So it's not looking good. <laughs> I got a good feeling about it, Jacob. I like to look on the brighter side of things. And even if uh, dire circumstances are abounding, I like to think that we will uh, push on through them nonetheless. Well, I mean, that's I don't just me, Jacob. I can't speak for two of us. might not happen, you know. Because I've definitely, been disappointed Definitely, definitely hang on to your hopes, but be enthusiastic about it is what I'm saying. Okay. Because, Jacob, I want to share a margarita pizza with you, which will also change your life. You think so? Yeah. You know what that is? No, I don't. Tell me. Okay. So it's, it's dough doused in a margarita and they just serve it to you like that okay try again okay it <laughs> is a thin crust pizza with i can't remember the cheese which is delicious cheese it has uh, margarita cheese uh, yeah um i can't remember the t type of like green that's on it it's like a spinach it, so, sort of maybe it is spinach it's something like that but it's very subtle and then i like to add pepperonis you're a pepper pepperoni man are you 100 percent Okay, yeah, we're adding pepperonis for sure. Um, and it's just large enough for us to split it. So it's going to be also another romantic afternoon in a, an Italian restaurant, which uh, is disastrous for most people because they tend to fall in love in a setting like that. Oh. Brandon, you and I have been in love for a long time, and this is going to seal the deal. So I hope you're prepared for uh, Thursday afternoon. Yeah, well, Garrett, you've, t you've said those words to me many times, but I know deep down you're in love with many men. Uh, speaking of that, Jacob, uh, I played a lot of Apex with Zach this week, and we oh, yeah. won even more on mm -hmm. Xbox. I know people find that laughable that we're winning on Xbox, but you know, it's still a crap ton of fun because it feels like I'm playing Titanfall in a Battle Royale setting, uh, at least because I, I recognize Titanfall with holding a controller because I've yet to play the game on PC, but um, it feels just as good on Xbox as it does on PC, even though I, I still definitely prefer a keyboard and mouse for that game, but I've gotten used to the controller as well, and uh, we have been quite victorious. I think he and I have... 
between five and six. I can't remember the exact number victories or champions, I should say. And Zach alone has 10, even without me. So we're, we're uh, doing just fine, Jacob. And wow. I wanted to have a real heart to heart with you here and say that the reason why we haven't won nearly every match, when we don't win, we typically land in the top two or three. Um, and that's because our third teammate is typically a moron and yeah, fails us <laughs> quite often. And that's why we need a dedicated third so that we can win 95% of our matches. And that's why I'm extending this invitation again, hoping that you will accept it. Because Zach made a great point, Jacob. While, yes, there are higher frame rates on PC, to him and I now, FPS stands for friends per second. Oh, this is all Zach fuck's saying this. Sake. He says... FPS no longer means frames per second. Drop that and consider it friends per second. And well, well I do Pringus appreciate himself. both of you, and I consider you both friends. I, I uh, playing with a controller, Garrett. You don't want to see me playing with a controller. It's, Jacob, it's you, been you've been a couple been, years. You used to thrive in shooters with a controller. Nah, I don't Specifically, know if Call of thrive Duty. is the right word. More of like well, you had got moments by. of glory, is what I'll say. <laughs> I got by. <laughs> I had a positive KD. How about that? Well, Jacob, think of it this way. You know Apex pretty well now. I'd say almost as well as you know the back of your hand. It's true. And I think the controller, while it would be a minor crutch in the beginning, if you give it a few matches, you'll get used to it. And you know the game so well that you'll thrive, as Zach and I have. And that's why I'm dying for you to just let it download while you go to sleep tonight. And that way, when I get home, the three of us can team up and we can bask in the glory of uh, championships together. What time does do you guys play? We often play in the mornings. We've been known to play in the evenings as well. Okay. So obviously that imp impedes on your uh, streaming schedule a bit. It'd have to be on nights when you take a night off, I guess. But um, if there's ever a morning um, that you can join us, we'd love to have you. It's it's great, man. I roll out of bed. That's what gets me out of bed when I don't have work. <laughs> I roll out of bed at like, say, 9 a.m. when Zach's getting up. We yeah. brew coffee and we get on Xbox and just sip our coffee and win an Apex, man. It's great. <laughs> it's a great way to start the day. That sounds great. I uh, My problem is that I roll out of bed and go to work or I go to the gym. <laughs> Right, right, right. It's not right. that easy. But I am a little more available at nighttime. Okay. So. Well, for that, that's good enough reason for me, Jacob. I'll, I think you I'll should. I'll give uh, you this. I'll download the game and maybe I try it one night and I'll see what I think okay. about it. How about, How about you don't say maybe, say you will try it. If you hate it, I won't ever ask you again. Okay. But you will try it. How about that? I will try it. How about I that? I love that, Jacob. And I love you. I'm glad we came to this agreement. I know Zach's going to crap his pants out of... Uh, excitement as well but, so thank you for <laughs> fulfilling the destiny but, that's upon us i will never abandon my pc home and i will no, always of have my main account on the pc of course and that's, yeah, that's where, where i'll spend most remains. of my time i understand that completely i'm not asking you to forego the pc by any means believe me when i'm not when i'm done playing with zach i hop on pc hop on pc and play an abundance of games where i prefer to play obviously but um i uh, gotta say man it's a good time so i look forward to it do you have the battle but, pass yet no, I don't. Mm. I mean, obviously, if I'm winning so much on Xbox, it kind of makes sense, but I've yet to buy it. I got you. No I one's gotcha. really sold me on it yet. Like, I've seen the cool skins, but aside from the skins, like, what really is the point? Uh, that's the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not, I'm not too into skins because I hardly recognize them to begin, to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. I'm happy with, because I primarily play Bangalore now, and I rock her uh, yellow skin. That's like one of her basic colors, and it just looks nice to me. I'm happy with that. Hey, that's if if you're happy with that, then hey, don't get it. You, you got to find your own happiness, you know. Oh, I found it, Jacob, and it's in uh, the lady with smoke grenades and explosives. She is nice. I like She's her. She's cool. Um, aside from Apex, Jacob, what'd you play this week? Um, again, I've only played one other game, which was Octopath Traveler, and Garrett. Holy crap! So. I'm about 70 hours into this game now, and something exciting just happened. So, I don't know if you briefly recall me mentioning that there are jobs, which you can equip with each one of your characters. And basically a job, it's it's not like a literal occupation in the game. It's, it's like you take upon the skills and the abilities of another class, like from another character. And basically, what's so exciting is that I unlocked um, two of the advanced classes in the game. And there are four advanced classes. And they're called advanced classes because they do more um, damage or they just have cooler abilities. They're like in-game classes. And uh, I unlocked the Star Seeker and the Sorcerer. And I 
so basically I could I could equip those uh, classes to an existing character that I already have, and it adds to like their move set and like just the stuff that they can do in general in combat. So I uh, just like getting those extra like abilities and skills on two of my characters actually kind of breathe some new life into the game for me and i'm like really excited to finish the game out because i'm on the last chapter like i've been saying and i'm uh currently trying to grind through this week because i'm excited for a game coming out friday called fire emblem three houses garrett i uh i've been consuming some podcast content about the game i've been um, watching trailers been watching some early gameplay for the game and i am kind of excited to jump into fire emblem for the first time uh i don't know necessarily why it's really got its hooks in me right now but i'm kind of really itching to play it and you know maybe it turns out that i play it and i don't actually like it but i would kind of be kicking myself if i didn't uh at least give it a shot right now in terms of just trying it out since like we're kind of in a or well, i would say this is like the end of the slow season when before things really start to kick off so if, if i'm gonna play it anytime it's gonna be now and uh that's that's kind of what I'm trying to mentally prepare for this week, and I'm going to be playing some more Apex, of course, hopefully with you and Zach. But um, I think that's about it for me. Um, like I said, just been playing those two games, um, been getting more wins in Apex. Uh, it's always fun. Um, still in gold rank. Um, haven't been playing as much Apex as I have in weeks past, so that's kind of why I stagnated in gold right now. But hopefully by the end of next week, I'll. Uh, be either close to platinum rank or in it. I'm happy to hear that, Jacob. Sounds uh, like a pretty good time. You have to mm. let me know how fire I'm living this. I'm sure we'll all hear about it uh, on your or hear your thoughts on the podcast when you sure. get to it. Yeah, should be next week. Sweet. Of course, I will. It will come out Friday, so I won't have like extensive thoughts, but I'll have you know hopefully a few hours in. Yeah, I know Zach. Not Zach and I. Uh, Preston and I intend on dabbling in Wolfenstein Youngblood. Oh yeah, that's also coming out Friday. Yeah, I think we're going to try to play a bit of co-op before next week. Maybe we'll do a Let's Play of sorts as well. Yeah, that'd be um, super cool. I I'm saw your like, Gears video. That was a nice video. That was a fun video. Yeah, it was a good time. We put um, out a Let's Play. Yeah, that was one of a few things I played this week, which I'll get to. Um, but yeah, we uh, obviously I'm going to try to record as many new games as possible as they as they roll out, and especially when Preston and I or Zach and I and or you and I can play anything together. It'd be nice, but because I, I love working on videos like that, and I, I want to try to keep all of our Let's Plays under five minutes if possible, because I feel like in the age we live in now, people's attention spans only last so long. Of course, like a really engaging, in-depth video, there's an audience for that, but I feel like what works for us is like bite-sized <laughs> little snippets like that. Yeah. So, and it's easy for me to edit. Plus it's really fun to work on. So I think that's a sweet spot for us. So hopefully, uh, if anyone who's watched it, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you can count on more. And of course we always throw out the invitation for anyone who wants to actually team up with us in games. Uh, we'll always let you know before we record anything. If you guys want to team up for a video, we'd love it. Um, I know we've done that in the past. I actually rewatched, uh, mine and Preston's Sea of Thieves video this week because I kind of like had I mean I, I had a, I've always had a fondness for our Let's Plays but I hadn't really watched one in a while and that Sea of Thieves Let's Play is so funny to me for some reason um, it's one of my favorites I think that and uh, the Destiny 2 raid we did with um, Pace and uh, a few other gentlemen I know Lemon was there yes. Trash Can Judo before he changed his name was there what did he change his um, name to? I can't remember it's like uh it's something more hardcore. Trash can. If you're still is. in the community, let us know what you changed your name to. Yeah. I, I feel like I remember what it is. I'd have to think about it a while. But that, that was one of by far one of my favorite Let's Plays we've ever done. And um Yeah, that was fun. So I want to do more of those, especially with the community be a good time. But um what did I say before that? Oh yeah, Young Blood. Yeah. So I, I'm not like totally excited for that, but I think it'd be cool to to do some co op with Preston. So we think, we actually think we'll enjoy it more because after playing the Gears Five Tech Test, which I think we may dabble in again again next weekend as well, um, we want to replay Gears Four and co op before the fifth one comes out because we don't re hardly remember anything from the story, and we had so much fun playing Gears on PC that we've been in, uh, inspired to play Gears Four again. So we'll probably do that as well. There you go. Um, but Gears 5 in particular, let's see where I can start. Here, here, here's the good thing. Um, on PC, for me, it feels entirely fresh. Not in terms of like the way the game operates or mechanically or even aesthetically. It looks exactly how it's always looked. I mean, I know Gears 1 in particular was much more dark and gloomy than uh, the following entries. But 
As far as presentation, nothing really new there, but the way it feels on PC is just incredible. I know I say that about every shooter, whether it be third person or first person on PC, it's just awesome. But Gears especially, man, me and Preston, it was very much how we just described our uh, our beta experience with Doom before Doom 2016 came out, where we were just absolutely unstoppable. Like we were, we were almost concerned with how good we were, and that's exactly the experience we had in the tech test. And we made sure that the matches, even the ones we... we where we massacre teams. It was not always bots, thankfully. Because the first few matches I played were bots. I was like, man, these people are terrible. And I realized it was bots. But there were yeah. several matches Preston and I played where it was uh, super competitive. We managed to come out on top. And we're always like really, really good together. Hey, Garrett, and, one thing before you continue. Yeah. I keep hearing the scratching on your end. Scratching? Yeah, it's like coming through your microphone. I don't know if it's like you scratching your facial hair or if it's oh, like... Oh, I know what it is. Is it it's your headphones? The, you, this right here. You hear that? No, I don't hear it. I hear it. I heard that. What, what about this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sorry. That's scratching my face. Okay. <laughs> Wait, it's scratching my collar, actually. Yeah, it's coming through on in my headphones. So Is it really obnoxious? Uh, at times, it was a little bit, but I could still make out what you were saying. Okay, well, if it gets too bad, just let me know. I'll have to remove my shirt, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> because this, this collar is, like, right where the mic is. Yeah, yeah. All right, sorry. Um, But, uh... My favorite aspect of the tech test is the arcade quick play mode, which I don't know if it, if it existed or not in Gears 4 because I didn't play any Gears 4 multiplayer. But arcade quick play um, it sort of reminds me of Infinity Slayer from Halo 4 where everyone can spawn with like one of three weapons. I think you can spawn with like a hammer burst, which is like the three shot burst rifle. You can start with the Lancer, which is the standard assault rifle or the submachine gun called the something. I can't remember what it is. So anyone can spawn with any of those weapons and each character you can choose from all has different, all have different perks. For example, the characters I like to choose, whether it's a locust or a cog soldier, uh, has the flinch perk where if you're getting shot when you're aiming down sides, you don't flinch from it, which I feel like is foolish not to use that perk because you get shot at so much. But that's how I always chose. But on top of that, no one can spawn with a shotgun, which is beautiful. And that's exactly, that's exactly what I've always described in Gears, what I've wanted. So the beauty is every match, dude, especially when it's real players, everyone's taking cover and shooting at each other, how it was always designed to be. Yeah. And it's the coolest thing, because I, as I told Preston, the first time I really noticed it was when we were playing with a full team of all players. I was like, dude, this match is moving really slowly because all the bot matches, it'll end in like five seconds because they're so bad and you just slaughter all of them. Mm -hmm. But everyone was taking cover and trying to flank each other and, and uh, rushing down certain corridors and just the back and forth shooting behind cover was so much fun and how I always wanted it to feel. And it, it's especially cool when everyone's working as a team to really overcome certain areas of maps and control certain areas, areas of maps. But so that was one of my favorite aspects of that. But on top of that, what's cool is that as you continue to get kills, you're able to drop either or kind of like call in like Infinity Slayer, a uh, random weapon or one of three weapons, which includes the sniper, um, a Boltock hand cannon pistol or the uh, what's the other thing? Why am I losing my train of thought here? The shotgun. No, it's the it's the sniper. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I can't remember the name of the rifle. It's like the DMR from Halo is what it's like. Then call in one of those three or call in a random weapon, which included in the random weapons is a shotgun. And what's great about it is that it's very much like a power weapon. Again, how I always thought it would be when someone actually spawns with that weapon, it can turn the tide of a match if someone is, is really good with it because you can just rush people and blow them in half instantly. So I love that because I like the presence of a shotgun. I just don't like the overabundance of it. So as far as that multiplayer mode is concerned, I have loved every second I've spent with the tech test. Um, I haven't really experienced too many terrible glitches. I know it's it's mostly about server stabilization. So in, on that front, it seems to be going pretty well. I mean, there were definitely some times where we'd have to wait up to like five to sometimes 10 minutes to get a full match of players, which is kind of frustrating. But I imagine by the time the game rolls out, that servers will fill up relatively quickly. Um, that's if there's even the slightest bit of hype for Gears 5. Preston and I are excited because it feels good on PC, ran well, and the multiplayer mode specifically it was a ton of fun so i have nothing but positive things to say about it i don't know if anyone else from the community played on xbox or pc i'd love to hear your thoughts i think i saw one more guy from my friends less playing it but i'm not sure if he listens to the podcast but yeah um anyone else <laughs> who played it please comment on either discord or on this youtube video because um i'd like to talk to someone else about it express and i are excited yeah that's good to hear um, though um i've you know i flirted with the idea of maybe picking up gears four and five you know just to consume the story and you know be caught up on that front because i know what happened in the first three so cool i don't know if you remember this you and i actually did a let's play for the first like half hour of gears four back I in do. the day i do remember 
Yeah. So, um, Gears, man, I'm uh, definitely still a fan. Um, I don't have the utmost faith in the story of the fifth one, but mm-hmm. I hope I hope I'm wrong about that. Um, I also played uh, another game on Xbox this week, believe it or not, um, and that includes Hunt Showdown. Hunt Showdown on Xbox. Yep. Why? Um, Mr. Girth Brooks uh, gifted me a trial version of the game, and I played a single match, and um, it was uh, not quite like PC, I'll say. <laughs> How so? <laughs> um, I think it was just jarring to me to play a game that was locked at 30 frames or, or hunted. Well, granted, I say that, and I used to play Hunt, I kid you not, at like 23 frames a second. <laughs> but it was, it was locked at uh, 30 FPS, the UI was totally different, and the aim assist was basically like Gears, not Gears, uh, GTA, like default lock-on, where you like, oh, it just God. snaps to people. Yeah. Well, I'm probably exaggerating that a bit, but that's what it felt like just in comparison to mouse and keyboard. Mm-hmm. But I will say that, I mean, it, it ran really smoothly. Um, I didn't run into any hiccups. Uh, obviously, obviously, visually, it could be enhanced significantly, but as far as the, the way the game ran and the experience itself, I think for console was really strong. Um, so I enjoyed it. Uh, again, I don't know. I don't think I'll actually pick up the 1.0 version when it launches in August, but um, I did like what I played on, on Xbox. So all of you out there who are playing on Xbox, I'm glad to hear you've enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully it makes its way to PS4 sooner than later, because I know that's coming. I think it's in the fall. It'll land on PS4. So I can confirm as a diehard Hunt fan and player that it is not terrible on console. Garrett, it sounds to me like you owe Boggle a match or two. Boggle? Yeah. You said Boggle mm-hmm. gifted it to you. No, no, not Boggle. Girth Brooks did. Oh, sorry. You're but right. Boggle, Girth if Brooks. you're out there, man, I haven't spoken to you in a while. I'd love to, yeah, <laughs> to I think join Boggle's you again on PC. <laughs> in the bayou. It's been too long. Yeah, it's Girth Brooks. You better play a match with that, man. Uh, the trial version ended actually an hour after I got oh. it. Oh. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. I mean, again, if I have some disposable income, I might pick it up one day. So I didn't realize that. he gifted you the trial version. <laughs> yeah, I think I think if you I, mean, well, I don't know how it works. Maybe if I go back on there, it's the full version. I'm not sure, but it was a trial for me when I played it. Hmm. Um, but aside from Hunt, which I did enjoy, I played uh, Master Chief Collection again. Great time. Cannot wait for Reach to come to PC. Um, hopefully that's I hope they just kind of drop that out of nowhere. Because I know they've been running a ton of those. Uh, what do they call them? Uh I can't remember what they call their their tech tests. Yeah, they have a specific name for it, but very excited for that to come to PC. I'm going to be indulging heavily. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Um, I have faith that it's going to feel great. And it'll definitely have like that excitement right when it comes out. It'll be interesting to see how many people stick with it. For sure. Yeah, I'm pumped. Um, I think that's all I played this week. Um, Nice. That's a solid slate of games. Yeah, I did see... Lots of shooters. ...a film with my mother this evening. Oh, yeah? What'd you see? I saw uh, Lion King. Hey, that's cool. I was actually talking to my mom because she wanted to go see it, too. Nice. But we haven't Yeah, I I, uh, I, I actually had not intended to go see it, I don't think. Not because I had anything against the movie. I know there's been a lot of uh, controversy surrounding the film itself, but... Um, I didn't really have that that much interest because um, although it looks beautiful, I just, you know, I've, I've seen the, the original um, just from the trailer alone. I can tell that I'd probably enjoy it, but not enough to want to warrant me to want to go see it. But my mom wanted to see it, so she bought us tickets and I met her and it was fun to see my mom for a bit. And uh, I, I actually enjoyed the movie a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I certainly it's one of those situations similar to Toy Story 4, where after I saw the movie, I'm like, wow, that was a great story. They did an amazing job with this, but it was definitely unnecessary. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's what I felt like with Lion King. Like it was gorgeous. Most of the, I think all the all the original songs I love were in there. Um, the story was exactly as it was in the original animation. Um, so I don't really have any complaints at all. I just it was it felt unnecessary to me, and I can of course um, understand how people feel about the lack of expression in the faces of the animals. I mean, there were a couple shots where you could kind of see some emotion there. Um, but overall it, it very much, um, lives up to the, the description of a national geographic documentary with voiceover. (laughs) It's basically what it feels like, but I thought the new voice cast did a pretty good job. I feel like the weakest was probably Donald Glover. Um, really like older Simba, I mean, he was fine, I guess, but I feel like in comparison to his, his younger version and, and the majority of the other, the rest of the cast, it was just kind of bland. Hmm. I don't know why I feel that way. Um, but 
It was good. I thought the guy who did Scar, I can't remember everyone's names, you'll have to forgive me, but the guy who did Scar's voice, it worked for me by the end. I thought it was great. Um, I thought Beyonce, surprisingly, was great as, as grown-up Nala. I thought she was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, th- I, I do think my favorite parts of the movie are, are all when Simba's young and Nala's young because they're just adorable. And uh, I think the voice cast is really, really good. Yeah. Um, Timon and Pumbaa, uh, Seth Rogen, I can't remember the other, guy, other guy's name. He's from Parks and Rec, I think. Um, they were hilarious in the movie. So I thought Timon and, Poop, Timon and Pumbaa were two of the best characters. But overall, uh, I liked it more than I thought I would. And I'm glad I got to hang out with my mom. But pretty good flick. I don't know if I, again, if I uh, had seen it on my own. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd actually have done that. But free ticket was great. So For sure. Did you have a nice bowl of corn? I, had, I actually had too much corn. Um, oh. My mom had this like special coupon where we were just going to get one medium bag of popcorn. We're like, well, we can upgrade you for free for two large buckets. <laughs> we're like, why not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we had way too much popcorn, but it was fun. I had a Coke Icy as well. Ooh. So it was a good time. Yeah, it sounds like a fantastic time. I'm, I'm just a little bit jealous. Yeah, I got to uh, I'd love to catch a flick with you again one of these days, Jacob. Yeah, we'll have to on our, again soon. Our lunch dates now, but uh, another movie date would be fun. What's the last thing we saw together? Uh, we just saw Spider-Man, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. You and I went. We need that's to see... Time. What's a movie that's out right now that we need to see? Um, There's a movie called The Farewell that I hear it's really good. It's not like an action movie or anything, but I hear The Farewell's good. Um, I know Preston wants to see Midsummer. We can go see that with Preston. Good. Um, good. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I could talk about something that I watched this week. Let's hear it. It wasn't a movie, but I finished Stranger Things Season 2. I am now three or four episodes deep into Season 3, and uh, you're right. Season's great. Um, Can't really say much more without spoiling it, but uh, Billy. God damn it, Billy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's it's a... a, God, I love the show so much. Like... I, I, I remember watching the first season. I was just kind of like, you know, this is a cool idea, but I don't know if I'm really into it. Um, and I, I remember I watched it with someone else that I was dating at the time. So maybe that took away my focus from the show. And maybe I didn't get into it as much because of that. But after watching like the second season, like I'm all on board and it's actually becoming one of my favorite shows. It's most definitely one that's one of my favorite shows that's currently airing right now. Because uh, looking back, like a lot of my shows have like finished, which is kind of sad. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying Stranger Things 2, uh, or season two. I mean, in a three, I'm well, well into it and I'm really enjoying it. I'm glad to hear it, man. I, uh, I really, really like season three a lot. I think it's definitely, I don't think it's right to say it's my favorite season because I still think season one will always be my favorite season, mm-hmm. but in, in comparison to season two, I like it a lot more. Yeah. Um, there are definitely some awesome character moments in season two, but I think the story overall, I like more in season three. Yeah, And um, there's actually been quite a significant amount of controversy, not controversy, but criticism of the season and specifically from like really, really hardcore like film and TV people, not, yeah. not so much like general fans. And while I thoroughly enjoyed season three, like I absolutely loved it. Um, I can understand everyone else's perspective that's criticizing it. And it's interesting. I'll send you a video that kind of it didn't really change my perspective in the season, but it definitely gave me like a. I, I viewed it differently upon reflecting on how the story plays out and how the characters interact and everything. But um, I think when I just look at it as, as entertainment value, I, I loved every second of it so much. And I think it's mostly due, of course, to the characters that entirely drive the show. I mean, they could tell any story with those characters and I'm probably going to be on board with it. And uh, just the way they interact and how they've uh, they've evolved over time, especially Steve Harrington, man. He is by far yeah. my favorite character. Yeah, that, there's, a, there's a lot of great characters in the show and that's, Obviously, why it's you know it's popular as it is because they've really done a good job, like with each one of those characters, you know, fleshing them out at least to some extent. Right. Yeah, and I I think most of the criticism comes down to some characters being totally one note, which yeah. I get. Um, but I I don't I don't judge it as harshly as some of these other people do because um I just had a great time with it and I look yeah, forward I'm to the inevitable season four. Um. What's funny is that Scoops Ahoy from the show is an actual ice cream parlor. They don't, oh, really? I, don't, I don't know how many locations they have total, but there is one in uh, Burbank, California. 
And mm-hmm. I was going to go when I was in L.A. and the ride from Santa Monica to Burbank was going to be like 25 minutes. But the Uber price was just way too expensive the time of day it was. Yeah. Um, and I just couldn't afford it, unfortunately. I, I kind of wish I'd gone now, like looking back on it, because it was at a time where I hadn't yet to be paid for weeks. <laughs> I was like, I have no money. I could put it on my credit card, but it's not wise. So I was like, I'm going to be a mature adult and just forego the ice cream this time. Mm-hmm. So I did not get, get to go to Scoops Ahoy, which I hear is just booming after the show, of course. And all the employees wear the exact outfit fits from the show and they actually have the uh uss butterscotch that you can order at, at the the parlor nice which i think is amazing yeah so next time i make it out to los angeles hopefully i can try one of those because the show just made me um really really um crave ice cream yeah so. there's certainly a lot of like ad placement within the mall and the show <laughs> totally and did you know that's gwinnett place mall I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, that's going to that place right, you know, like right down the street from where we used to live. Yeah, yeah. Zach and I used to go into that wall, not not that Walmart. That's kind of look familiar. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, I went in there every it. day. Yeah, that was that was our GameStop. I went to that GameStop all the time. I went into a different one. Yeah, I don't remember where it was. <laughs> it yeah, it was only, the one we uh, went to for GTA the release. Right. Yeah, they only renovated one um, location. But not a location, a one like wing of the the mall. Yeah. But um, yeah, I know that mall had closed down even prior to them shooting that, which is nice that they got to use it. But mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. They used a mall that we used to go in all the time. Oh yeah, for sure. So season three, man, I look forward to hearing your your thoughts on the entirety of it. Oh, dude, we'll have to do like a spoiler talk or something like that because I definitely want to talk about it with someone. Yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> um, what else we got? Um. I don't think there's anything else from the week I could talk about. Not yeah. that I, not nothing too drastic, at least. I didn't have that in, uh, that in exciting of a week, but you know. Well, I think the most exciting aspect of my week, Jacob, was getting in your fresh and fit car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was thrilling, man. I like that little bugger. Yeah, dude, it, it's it. You know, it has some uh, some kick to it. It's a nice little vehicle. It has, has really yeah, good handling. And I, I got to uh, experience, experience sort of what it's like to to work with you. Yeah, kind of. Um, I need to get new tires though. My two front tires are balding. I think my boss mentioned that I'm going to be getting two new tires. So you can just Mad Max it and put some spike wheels on there. <laughs> Dude, that's what I need. Got all these damn pedestrians out of my way in Atlanta. You know. Yeah, that's that's typically the the way to solve that issue. For sure. Well, Jacob, aside from all of that goodness, I think I'm ready to dive into the news of the week, and that of which we got an abundance of it. I'm excited. Very excited. So, so much so that I'm going to ask you a very important question. Are you ready? Let's hear it. Hey, man. What's the news? San Diego Comic-Con 2019 is the news, Jacob. Now, I'm not obviously covering every aspect, every announcement, every action figure, every cosplay that was shown at this show. <laughs> but uh, mostly the stuff that stuck out to me personally and, of course, all the Marvel news that, re- that was released, which is, of course, the, the, the biggest news of the entire conference. So, um, let's start with some movie trailers about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just watched the Top Gun Maverick trailer. I How'd did. How do you feel about it? I love it. Have you seen it. the original Top Gun? Of course. Okay, good. It's like asking checking. if I've ever had cereal. Okay. You know? It's I'm like, glad you Of course. Um, Top Gun's one of my favorite movies ever. It's a classic. But, uh, yeah, looks looks like the new one's going to be good. Um, I don't really know what I want from it, you know? I don't know if it needs to happen, but... We're getting it, and, uh, you know, I hope it's good. It looks exciting. It does. looks a little uh, old school. I think visually it looks incredible, man. All those practical Mm -hmm. shots of the jets flying around, it looks so cool. Yeah. And uh, I'm certain that Tom Cruise has flown a jet in certain sequences. I don't know about all of them, but as we know, Tom Cruise is adamant about doing his own stunts. Mm -hmm. So I think the shot of him taking off in the aircraft carrier is definitely real. It looks incredibly real. Yeah, I don't know if all like the crazy maneuvering and like stunts in the air or Tom Cruise. I'd be blown away if it was. I, I wonder how much that rig was that had the camera attached to the jet then if that was real. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, I'm I'm certain those shots are real. I mean, I'm sure I'm I imagine they've a lot of it's practical. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm not like a like a diehard fan of the original, but of course, really, really enjoy it. Oh, I and, love it. Um, I grew up with it with my dad. Nice. I know Zach's dad's a huge fan too. I think Zach's dad has seen the film on every format it's ever been released on. Of course, including theater, but every DVD, every VHS, every 
whatever version has ever existed, his dad's mm-hmm. seen it. I'm sure his dad's seen it well over at least 50 times would be my guess. Probably more. <laughs> He's probably got me beat. Because <laughs> his dad's a pilot, if, right. uh, if anyone was curious. It but. has the best like music sequence ever. The plane, Incredible. With, plane the with the boys. The boys man. Yes, Unforgettable. Dude. You and I actually did an homage to that when we were in high school. We did. I remember that. Yeah, Very we fondly. Were, uh, our, our church small group, um, our youth group, had this VMAs contest every year where all the small groups would get together and make a music video of their choosing. It had to be like church appropriate, of course. Ours was borderline every time. <laughs> but uh, um, everyone had to make music videos. We'd have like a big video music awards ceremony where people would debut their music videos and like get stupid awards and stuff. And I remember, our, I think it was our senior year, we all uh, dressed up as... Um, like jazzercisers, and I, I think I wore a dress in the video. <laughs> yeah, but there were different we went, portions of the video. Yeah, there's like a workout sequence or an exercise sequence. There's a tanning bed sequence that I'm in. There's a volleyball sequence like from the movie. Mm-hmm. And it was incredibly um, suggestive. To there say was the a least. Shania Twain sequence too. There was, yeah, yeah, that was great. And um, I think it, maybe playing with the boys was just part of it. I think we did like an homage yeah, it was, to the yeah. 80s or something. <laughs> Because we did uh, Shania Twain, then we did... I think that's actually what the the theme that year was, was 80s, if I'm not mistaken. That would make sense. I think that's what it may have been. And we couldn't decide on one song, so we just chose like four <laughs> yeah, or five. We did an amalgamation. It was good. Uh, that video is still out there somewhere. I'll share it if I can find it. But I think it's on Facebook, actually. That's where it is, yeah. Man, I'm amazed that's still out there. That could be blackmail for me at this point. And I might be I wrong, be but I don't know if we actually ever submitted the video like i don't know if it was done in time no that was two years in a row our group invested a lot of time of course i was the editor <laughs> so yeah we would always shoot it too late and i would edit it too late so by the time the awards came around we'd only be able to debut it on like social media because mm-hmm. it never actually got to debut at the church because we were too slow but hey, that's good enough they were too good for the church anyway i yeah. think um we would have won every time and to be fair to all the other groups it's better that we held off you know for sure <laughs> grace if you will yeah we're being modest yeah but Maverick, man, looks awesome. I'm a big Tom Cruise movie fan. Um, I get a lot of people have issues with his personal life, but as far as his films go, I love them. So I cannot wait to see this movie. He's I know Val Kilmer's young back man. too. Uh, Val Kilmer's in there and also, uh, what's that young guy who's in? Whiplash. I always forget his name. He's in Fantastic Four. He's in a bunch of movies. Can't remember his name, but he's in it too. Hmm. 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 What about It Chapter 2? I think I never saw the first it, Garrett, so I don't know Why how not? helpful I am here, but it looks you know, terrifying. <laughs> he looks yeah. scary as always. <laughs> yep. I think it's um, cool how they're like coming back as adults. I think yep. that's cool. I think that's how it is in the book originally, and also the miniseries from the 90s is the same way. Mm-hmm. As uh, um, Pennywise comes back every... Or it, I should say, comes back every 26 years, I think. Interesting. In whatever town they're in. So obviously it's 26 years later after the events of the first movie. And I love the cast, like James McAvoy. And I, I like Jessica Chastain a lot. And I, I, from what I read online, people don't like her for some reason. But I like Jessica Chastain. I know Bill Hader's in it, which I'm also excited about. And I can't remember the rest of the cast, but I think all of them look awesome. I think the trailer's great. And of course, Pennywise looks incredibly spooky. And... um I look forward to seeing it. I don't really have much to say because I'm not like a huge It fan, but I really, really like the first movie. And uh, I all I can hope is that the cast has as much chemistry, the adult cast has as much chemistry as the young cast because they were incredible. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm excited about that one. Is there going to um, be a third one? I don't think so. Not that I know of. I think there's only parts one and two. Okay. So... Other than that, Jacob, I think the biggest trailer of the week that we can agree on is uh, Netflix is The Witcher. I think so. The one I was most excited about for sure. Yeah, you and me with I was waiting all week for that. It was one of those rare occasions where I was just refreshing Twitter every 10 minutes till it came out. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I did the opposite and I didn't see it till like midday Saturday. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, because I was waiting for that all week because I knew it was coming. I mean, I think I was probably mostly excited for the Marvel news, but The Witcher yeah. in particular is the trailer I was most interested in. One, because of, of course it's a property we're big fans of now, but also because I always felt I, I didn't have the, the most faith in that show <laughs> whatsoever. I don't know why I felt that way. I think it's just like the leaked images and like the test footage of, of Henry Cavill wasn't that impressive. And yeah. Everything I'd seen leading up to the trailer didn't really blow my mind, even the slightest. So I, was, I was mostly worried about it, so I wanted it to be really good. 
And from what I've seen, I know Preston feels this way. I'm, I'm really stoked about it. I think it looks really, really good. And I think I had to watch it a few times to like really get, get the feel for it. Cause I had to like block the game out of my mind. And remember it's based on the books, mm -hmm. a lot of the short stories, which I've kind of made it a goal of mine to read hopefully at least a couple of the short stories. And there's one book in particular that's an amalgamation of Geralt's short stories. So I kind of want to read that prior to the show coming out. It's going to have a little, more, a little more appreciation for the written aspect of The Witcher versus the games because it's based exclusively on that. And just what I've seen in the trailer looks super cool. I think it's eight episodes. So it's good to know they're not going to force... I assume they're not going to force too much story or have any filler episodes or anything. So... Before I continue, Jacob, I want to hear your thoughts. How do you feel about the trailer? Yeah, I mean, I mostly echo you. Um, I think all the costume design looks fantastic. Um, I, the world looks very believable to me. Um, a lot of the... Um, I love seeing Roach. Love Roach, man. Best horse ever. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, Yennefer looks good. Really like how she looks. Um, the, the little girl is Triss, right? In the show. The blonde? Yeah. Yeah, that's Triss. Okay. Not Triss. No, sorry. That's, so, sorry, uh, not Triss. Um, what's her name? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we goofed. Uh, Siri. Yeah, Siri. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's Siri. Um, yeah. I mean, I it, well, I don't really know what to say. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see the show. Is it coming out next year? I think it comes out in December. This year? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. I thought it was 2020. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it comes out this year. Oh, that's that's a pleasant surprise. That's... Now I'm like super stoked. <laughs> Is it December yeah, me yet? Too. Uh, we're getting there. It'll be here before we know it. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Um, I, I was also a little concerned before the show was coming out because uh, I don't know. I, I didn't necessarily think that um Henry Cavill looked fantastic from the early photos of him as Geralt. Um, necessarily, like I thought he looked fine. I thought it was you know it was gonna work, but just after seeing him in, him in action through you know the the editing and whatnot I, I think he looks great i think the show as long as it doesn't do anything too crazy or you know out of sync with what's been told through the books and the games or whatnot whatever they're pulling from you know i think it's going to be a success definitely i, I have to hope the, so at uh, least i i saw ign's video where they said they got to see three small snippets of different scenes from the show uh -huh. behind closed doors and they said the action scene with Geralt and like a like a hall or like a like a feast hall, whatever you call it, like a big cathedral where he has a combat sequence is pretty cool. They said the choreography was good and the action was pretty strong. Nice. Um, they said the Siri bit was pretty cool. She sees like this ancient magical tree. And I think there's another sequence where uh, someone else, I think it's Unifer, is going through like a transformation or something. Hmm. So... Um, it does look awesome based on the trailer. Um, yeah, I think yeah. the visual effects even look pretty strong. I know it's pro they're probably not even finished yet, but like that shot of that big, I, forgive me, I don't know the actual name. I think presence that's like a, an arachnoid or something <laughs> coming out of that swamp at the end of the trailer when yeah. Geralt's all potioned up looks really cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I liked how his eyes looked there at the end. Yeah, I'm hoping the first episode, at least the first half of the first episode, is Geralt doing like a typical like Witcher contract. I think it'd be so cool. Yeah. Or like that's how the episode starts. And honestly, I think that's a great way to establish his character in the beginning is to show what he does, how he does it, and then him speak at the end. And kind of, you kind of, I assume the games are similar to the books, whereas Geralt has no emotion whatsoever. Um, so that's like, I think that's just like the best way to establish Geralt as a character for people who have no idea who he is. Um, that's what I would do if I was the showrunner, but I'm not. But good <laughs> news is the showrunner, I can't remember her name because I follow her on Twitter. But in, in, in an interview I saw with IGN, she said that they are not um, excluding the short stories and they're actually considering them very important to the show. I've also read that there is not like a primary villain in the show. I think there's multiple monsters Geralt deals with. I know, of course, monsters play a big role in Geralt's life in particular, but I think it's primarily about Ciri going through her journey, getting to Geralt, and then also Yennefer transforming into the Yennefer we know from the games where she's all powerful. Yeah, and everything. So, I imagine that's like three branching storylines that converge into one at the end. And I think, meanwhile, Geralt's dealing with a bunch of different monsters, which is what I want to see mostly. <laughs> like, I could honestly just have a Netflix show of eight different episodes of Geralt doing eight Witcher contracts, personally. Yeah. <laughs> but I know the other characters play a big role in in the overall story. But what I've seen, I'm very excited. I think Henry Cavill looks really awesome. I think a lot of people have come around around to him too, from what I've seen on. Uh, 
social media just based on the trailer. So I am super excited to see the show. And of course, I'm going to binge the crap out of it when it comes out. And it can only come soon enough, man. I'm dying to see it. Yeah, I agree, man. Really excited. But Jacob, speaking of The Witcher, Alec Walker writes into the podcast and says, Come. Guys, good to have you back. Last two episodes, 10 out of 10. I need help. <laughs> okay. The Witcher 3. As a busy man, wife, job, exercise, and a social life in the way, I sit down to play The Witcher and get nowhere. I do one quest, but add three. Should I do the main story, select missions, or chip away at everything for the rest of my life? I have to do it before Hunt Showdown, Hunt Showdown arrives on PS4, and I can't think of anyone better to ask than you three handsome chaps. Please help me with your worldly knowledge. Well, like, we're glad we're here to help, and uh, I think we have the solution for you. Jacob, would you like to begin? Well, if he only has a short amount of time to get through this game, um, first of all, good luck. Second of all, um, you're going to have to only do the main story quests, or enough enough quests, or like, you're going to have to do enough side quests to level up so that you can do the story quests. And, I mean, I don't know how much time you have to play this game, but, you know, it's definitely not worth skipping the DLC either I, I think the dlc especially blood and wine dude like it might just be one of the best dlcs ever made like i absolutely love blood and wine almost more so than the actual game and that's saying a lot but uh, that, uh I, this isn't a game that you just you know kind of pick and like i don't know like when i went into this game i wanted to do everything like i didn't get the platinum trophy like preston so maybe i'm not as hardcore as him but I made sure that I did pretty much everything in the game because I literally loved that game so much and I wanted to consume literally as much as I possibly could have. Um, but, you know, maybe you're not that kind of gamer. Maybe you just want to take, you know, the big the big story moments away from it. Just want to, you know, just step in, see what it's like. I, I'm not really I don't really know what you want out of this game. So, Garrett, what would you say to this young chap? Um. I would say uh, if it were me and I knew what was going on in The Witcher 3 since I played it from beginning to end, I would say focus on all the side missions because I think from memory, the, the majority of the experiences I had in Witcher 3 all stem from all the side quests and all of the Witcher contracts. While the main story is good, I don't really remember much of it. I mean, a few of the story missions are really, really strong too, but I think the most fun I had was exploring the world doing side quests and picking up Witcher contracts because I liked just being Geralt. I like living the life of a Witcher um, more so than just pursuing the storyline with Ciri and, and Yennefer and Triss and all them. Like, oh, that's awesome. Like, the main story was I, good. I mean, I, yeah, really I, don't, I don't renounce that whatsoever because I, I love it. Like, like you said, every aspect of The Witcher 3, including the DLC, which was remarkably strong. But I think the majority of the, the most fun I had, even in the DLC, I think the most fun I had was always Witcher contracts and always side quests and just exploring that world. Um, so that's what I yeah. would do personally. I mean, uh, if you had to choose like one aspect to play, that's what I would do. I also really enjoyed finding the Witcher gear. Uh, that stuff was so cool. I love. Yeah, I was like, going to throw that in there too. Going to like this random cave and finding like the what the the urchin silver sword or whatever because I went with the the bear set the robes. Yeah. And uh, I always remember that being super fun. It just felt really rewarding, too, because oftentimes it was like a high level zone, too. So you can just waltz in. Yeah, yeah, I, I second the notion on that one. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps, Alec. Um, yeah. I am, of course, excited for the show. And I actually sort of after watching that trailer, I kind of want to play not all the way through, but a, a little bit of Witcher 3 on PC because I have never played on PC, and the little bit I saw Preston play back in the day looked awesome, of course, because it runs at a high frame rate. Um, yeah. Remember, that stands for friends per second, Jacob. Don't forget it. Yeah, yeah. Lots of friends. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that trailer got me super excited for The Witcher, so I kind of want to read some short stories and play a bit of Witcher 3 before the show comes out, mm. which I may do. Just add it to my growing backlog that will probably grow till I'm in the grave to <laughs> pass it on to my children. <laughs> Finish these games for me, please. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. But... Other than that, Jacob, I think we're ready to jump into the Marvel news that was released at San Diego Comic-Con, and there was a bunch of it, and I'm excited to uh, go over it, speculate, and hear your thoughts. Jacob, Did you have you, have you seen any of the announcements before we go I, I basically saw them all on social media, so okay. if you mention them, I will know what you're talking about. Cool. There was no like right. footage, right? 
of anything? N no, not from the shows or movies themselves. Um, the only footage is, of course, of the actual panel and Kevin Feige and various actors and actresses. Yeah, See, that I didn't watch up. that. Yeah, I didn't watch that either. I've seen highlights from it, but not all the way through. But I have all the announcements pulled up, and we can talk about it a bit because I know you and I are. I'd say pretty big Marvel fans. I'm not like a yeah, live so and what? breathe Marvel, but as far as the MCU goes, I have seen every film, loved the majority of it. Of course, loved Infinity War and Endgame. I love Far From Home. So I can't wait to see what they do next and how the universe continues to expand and whatever arc is next. Because we just had or just capped, you know, the Infinity Saga. So what saga will be next? Yep. And of course, begins with Phase Four, starting with Black Widow on May first, 2020. Mm hmm. And David Harbour has been announced as, I think, the Red Guardian, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I just saw um, that today, actually. <laughs> I think he's an ally to Black Widow. And I've also written, I, I haven't researched all these shows or movies too much. I'm just kind of talking about what little I've heard. Um, but he's in it. And uh, there's also multiple Black Widows. I think it takes place or, or kind of revolves around her past a bit. Interesting. So. I think the speculation is now that Black Widow, spoiler alert, is now dead in the MCU present day. Um, will they bring her back? They possibly could from a different timeline, which we'll talk about uh, the multiverse here in a bit with Doctor Strange. But um, they could do that if, if Scarlett Johansson wants to stick around in the MCU. I'm sure Kevin Feige would happily oblige because she's an, an OG. She's been there since the beginning. So Did you say Captain Feige? Did I say Captain Feige? I said I meant to say Kevin Feige. If I said Captain Feige, he's technically Captain Feige. For being I honest. think you might have said Kevin, but he's I said Supreme Captain Leader Feige. Kevin Feige. <laughs> <laughs> Supreme Leader Kevin Feige. Um, he uh, would probably have her back happily, but I think the speculation is whether or not someone will take the mantle of Black Widow, since there are multiple Black Widows, which I didn't know. Mm -hmm. That's that's obviously like a title of assassins, I guess. Yeah, but um, we've yet to see a trailer. I'm sure we'll see a trailer before the the year ends, but. I'm kind of excited, but I love David Harbour. I do like Scarlett Johansson as an actress, and uh, I think she is awesome on screen as Black Widow. So um, even though the movie is said to take place in the past, Kevin Feige has to have a reason for it to tie into Phase 4 and the greater scope of things, because I feel like they're at a point now where they've learned and evolved so much as a studio. Even Kevin Feige is a producer. I think they know like what they want to do with everything. They have an even, an even better game plan than they ever did before. Mm -hmm. So I think whatever they have in store for Black Widow will have greater repercussions than they're probably le leading on for now. Mm -hmm. Which I certainly hope for, because I don't want to just go see a movie about Black Widow in her past and be like, oh, that was cool, but it doesn't really matter now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I want it to matter in the grand scheme of things. I think that's what the MCU is all about, is like, yes, like you need really strong singular stories, because the movie at the end of the day needs to be entertaining, needs to be engaging, and it, need, it needs to stand on its own. But I think it's also important for every movie to kind of progress the overall story forward in, even, in some way. Yeah, so yeah. that's all I can know for Black Widow. Um, the Falcon and Winter Soldier is coming to Disney+. Plus. Have you heard about that? Uh, just a little bit, yeah. Okay. So as we know, Falcon, again, spoiler alert, has taken on the mantle of Captain America. But they're using Falcon in the title of the show. So, and the shield is also in the show, or the logo of the show. So I don't, I, I think he, I don't, I, I can't I read the first issue of Captain America when Falcon became Captain America back in the day. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember if he actually went by Captain America or like Captain Falcon or something. <laughs> But whatever they call him, I, I hopefully they they completely they're they're completely inspired by his uh, his uniform or his suit from the comics. It looks really cool. So he basically looks like Falcon just with red, white, and blue. Gotcha. And he has the shield and I think a gun as well. Can he fly so, with his wings? Yeah, yeah, he flies and has okay, the shield cool. too. So it's it's that's actually cool. really cool. <laughs> yeah, but Winter Soldier's in there, and I I he I feel like he's the character we still need to explore much more. Obviously, we know yeah. a lot of his past and what he's been through since. Uh, um, Winter Soldier, the show or the movie, but uh, I still think there's a lot more to explore there. So I look forward to seeing them in action together and whatever story they decide to tell. Mm -hmm. But the the best part about the Disney Plus shows for Marvel is that they all tie into the overall movie arc and yes. the story. So yeah, it's not going to be that, like the Netflix shows. They're actually right. Gonna... So I'm in, even more encouraged to watch all these shows because I want 100%. to, of course, to be caught up. I don't want to miss anything. And I'm invested with the MCU now for how many years now? 10, 11. Yeah. So I'm not going to stop. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I highly doubt any of these shows will just downright suck. Because with Kevin Feige at the helm, like I have the utmost faith in whatever Marvel and Disney decides to do. Mm -hmm. um, of course, they've had some some shortcomings, but I think overall they always deliver. So I'm, I'm super excited about the shows, too. Yeah, same. And also the shows just like they give us an opportunity to explore even more characters and just make the universe even more exciting 
Totally. Like I am all for growing it as much as possible, almost to a point where now that I'm because because the thing that's kind of uh, pushed me away from comics is that while they do reboot quite often, um, there's by time I, I read a couple issues are on like issue 24 and I feel like I've completely lost my way. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it's easy to get lost in comic lines. I'm sure some some comic enthusiasts would would argue otherwise. But for me as a reader, I've never been able to invest beyond like a few a few issues of a comic because I just, it just it goes so quickly that by the time I can catch up, the story's gone in a million different directions. There's been crossovers in different comics. I'm just totally confused. Whereas the movies, seeing as only I think at most three movies, three Marvel movies will come out a year. Um, when they finally get back into the loop of things, um, that's easier to keep up with, especially when it's only a two hour movie. So um, now with the shows coming into play, it can be a bit trickier, but I'm at a point now where I'm willing to commit to watching everything because it's a little easier to keep up with. So the MCU, I like how it's its own entity of Marvel Comics is, is just really cool to me. Yep. Speaking of which, Eternals is coming in uh, November of 2020. You see, and I don't the, I don't know anything about this movie. I know Angelina Jolene's going to be in it, but I don't yeah. know anything about the Eternals. Um, I don't either, so I'll have to read up on that. I'm sure, of course, we'll hear much more prior to that day because that's well over a year out. Are, are they kind of like a cool. Fantastic Four kind of squad? I don't. I know they're, they're like a cosmic a squad. Galaxy? I'm pretty sure they're from. I'm pretty sure they're from space, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's cool that Angelina Jolie's joining the MCU. I think that's awesome. Um, I'm also most excited about uh, Rob Stark. Um. True King of the North. <laughs> I can't never remember his name. He was also in Bodyguard on Netflix, which is a great series. You should watch it. Um, that's what you you should watch, Jacob. If you need a show to watch anytime soon, watch Bodyguard on Netflix. Okay. I'll it's really good. That. And it's a one-off too. It isn't like a... I assume they're not going to do another season. If they do, it'll probably be based around a different story and characters. But his story in season one is really awesome. But I love him as an actor too. I thought he was fantastic as Prince Charming and Cinderella. <laughs> so he's been he's been around the block with Disney so far. So that makes sense as to why he'd wind up in a Marvel film. But he looks like a superhero to me. So I think that's cool. I think there's a few other actors in that cast that were also notable. I just can't remember their names. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see if I have it right here. Um, does not show. I think Daniel Brühl will return as the. the oh, no, no, that's talking about. Uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. That's also something I left out. Uh, Baron Zemo from Civil War will be back in the actual costume for Falcon and Winter Soldier, which is cool. All right, so wait, isn't Bucky in that show? Yeah, or, Bucky is the Winter Soldier. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, brain fart. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Uh, it says the Eternal, starring Richard Madden as Icarus, Kumail Nanjiani. Forgive me for these pronunci- pronunciations. As Kingo, Lauren Ridliff as Makari. Brian Tyree Henry is Fastos. It's a cool name. <laughs> Salma Hayek is Ajak. Leah, I mean, there's a lot of characters. Leah McHugh is Sprite. It's my favorite soft drink. If anyone is interested. Hey, Don you'll be Lee. happy to know that I've been drinking Sprites lately. Nice, man. It's very refreshing. Yeah, I had to mix it up. It's a good drink. Before I forget, Jacob, I need to discuss something very serious with you. Okay. Um, so Preston toss this little nugget my way nonchalantly i might add the other night and um it's a nugget that has truly changed my life for the better jacob and it's going to change yours you ready for this i don't know (laughs) it's a beverage okay okay so chick-fil-a has a secret menu item that i had no idea existed okay have you ever tried the frosted lemonade at chick-fil-a i've tried lemonade Okay, well, the frosted lemonade is similar. You remember me raving about the key lime shake at Chick-fil-A? Yes. Okay, so it's basically that. It's just lemons instead of key lime. So it's frosted lemonade where it's mostly vanilla ice cream. It's like a vanilla milkshake with just a hint of lemon, which is already delicious. Yeah. But they have a strawberry frosted lemonade at Chick-fil-A that's not even on the menu. And it's almost like a strawberry shake, but there's that hint of lemon in there. Yeah. That is just breathtaking, Jacob. Ooh. It is uh, amazing. I've had it four times in the last five days. So <laughs> um, oh my God. I, should pr- I should probably dial it back a bit. <laughs> so is this a lemonade or a milkshake? It's a milkshake. Okay. But it's a, it just ask for a frosted strawberry lemonade. That's okay. what it is. And, I'm going to um, do that like tomorrow. It is so good, man. You tried the key lime, didn't you, before it was gone? Yeah. And I've been yeah, drinking yeah. the peach all summer. Yeah, the peach is amazing, too. Dare I say, Jacob, the strawberry frosted lemonade is better than the peach milkshake. I believe it. Strawberry is a good flavor. 
Yeah, man. I uh, am really excited about it. I am um, consuming far too much sugar, but I'm loving every sip. Okay, so frosted strawberry, strawberry lemonade. lemonade. If you see the, the just the frosted lemonade on the menu, you'll be reminded no, just strawberry. So frosted strawberry lemonade. All right. And even if you're confused, you. they'll, know what, they'll know what you're talking about. Just call me, dude. I will answer anytime, anywhere when you're calling about a shake like that. Okay. <laughs> I will do that. Continuing on, we have Don Lee as Gilgamesh and Angelina Jolie as Athena. It's directed mm. by Chloe Zhao and will come to theaters November 6, 2020. Exciting. Cool. Next on the list, we have Shang-Chi and, uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Everyone seems excited about that one. Yeah, it says... Um, is it starring, starring Jackie Chan? Unfortunately, no. It'd be cool if he had a cameo, though. It's, it's starring Simu Liu. And the okay. title role appearing alongside Liu will be... What kind of name is this? Aquafina. Okay. Aquafina. And an, and an under... That's what it says. It just no, here, really that's weird. an advertisement. Oh, sorry, guys. I got stumped on the product placement there. <laughs> Aquafina in an undisclosed role and Tony Luang as the real Mandarin. Which is cool because, you know, uh, if you remember, like a phony Mandarin was in Iron Man 3. I do, Remember yes. fans were really upset about that. But on the other hand, people that say Iron Man 3 is an under, under, uh, underrated film say that the twist on Mandarin was actually really brilliant. So I don't know how I feel about that. I haven't seen that movie since the theater. I, I but, liked Iron Man 3. Um, people are excited that the real Mandarin is making his debut in Shang-Chi, which is cool. Um, what else we got? WandaVision is another Disney Plus show, including Scarlet Wish. Scarlet Wish, Scarlet Witch, and Vision. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I really care for that one that much. I mean, yeah, I like not, I like Wanda, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I will Vision. say that on the list, this is probably the one I'm least interested in. But like I said, I got to commit to Marvel. I'm going to exactly. watch it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the good news is that Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany are both reprising their roles, which is good enough for me. Like, if it was different actors, I'd definitely probably try to skip it and just read oh, about sure. it. Sure. Yeah, it wouldn't even be but, worth doing. <laughs> Yeah, with them returning, that's that's really exciting. And I know what happens in that show ties directly into, uh, which I'll skip to it now, I'll come back to Loki, will tie directly into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which is a pretty wild title. It sounds like a metal album, album yeah. name. <laughs> <laughs> but it says, uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness starring Benedict Cumberbatch as Stephen Strange with Scott Derrickson returning as director but joining... Doctor Strange this time around will be the Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen. In another twist, the events of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness will connect with the Disney Plus Marvel Studios series, WandaVision. That's pretty wild. Mm. And that yeah. comes to theaters May 7th, 2021. Um, you mean Doctor Strange? Yeah. yeah. Um, what I will say is that as awesome as all of these announcements are, let's hope that all of them actually come out. <laughs> because... Yeah. In phase three, I think there was a few things. It may have just been, uh, what was that show that came out? It, was, it wasn't The Eternals. It was something else. Uh, another space show that was just awful. It was originally um, supposed to be a movie that actually, ironically, was supposed to come out like a, a couple months ago, I think. Um, I can't remember what it It was so dumb that I remember what it was. Wasn't it on ABC? It's, yeah, something like that. I don't remember what it um, was. But that was um, one that did not release but I, I feel like like I said I think Marvel has grown so significantly and so prominently and just Hollywood itself that I feel like they've got it all under control at this point <laughs> so we'll plus see. Marvel Studios is such a renowned studio now that I think um, whoever signs on will commit and I imagine that unless all hell breaks loose which I doubt at this point that we can count on all this coming out which is cool yeah I hope so at least <laughs> yeah Winning uh, the worst logo award is Loki, although I understand the inspiration behind it. I still yeah. don't like it. It does look weird. I, I think it's the one I'm most excited for, honestly, though, because I love Tom Hiddleston, dude. I love him. Oh, and me too. Yeah. I, I cannot wait to learn more about Loki. Like, it's so cool that we're going or it's going to pick up where, you know, they change the timeline in, in not Infinity War. Uh, what's it called? Endgame. Yeah. It's going to pick up right when he disappeared with the Tesseract. So I love that. That's, that's awesome. so cool. Yeah. Yes, his uh, MCU's favorite trickster, Loki, will also make his way to the Disney Plus Marvel Studios. Loki, an original series starring Tom Hiddleston, will see the god of mischief causing even more trouble starting in spring of 2021. Like, you can't tell me anyone hates Loki. Like, he's just such a great character. And yeah, they have the awesome. perfect actor for him. Yeah, he's phenomenal. And obviously, like, the logo is inspired by his ability to take on different 
yes. personas and appearances and mischief, have mm-hmm. you? So it still looks like crap to me, though. <laughs> but I'm really excited. <laughs> Maybe for the they'll show. change it, you know, after <laughs> the feedback. Possibly. Um, next, we have the legacy of the What If Comics uh, show coming to Disney Plus. Will yeah, it be I didn't adapted understand the screen. One. It says it's the first animated series in the MCU will star Jeffrey Wright as the voice of the Watcher. Many actors from across the MCU will reprise their roles as voice talent. What if we'll present alternate realities in the Marvel Universe that are set to warp your world in the summer of 2021? Exclusively on Disney+. Plus. So I know one of the 1F scenarios is if like there's Marvel zombies as one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Like, yeah. What if the Avengers became zombies? <laughs> so this is just them having fun. Yeah, yeah, it's them playing with like alternate timelines that Mm -hmm. I assume won't actually affect the actual timeline, but it's just kind of like a fun, like, here are different ideas we could play with in the form of animation, which is cool. Yeah, actually, it's kind of cool. I'm I'm excited to see what they cook up and how long it will be. Is it going to be a, it's going to be a movie, right? I think it's a show. Yeah, it's a show. Okay. So each show will be a different, different story. Yeah, that sounds really fun to me. Yeah. It could be like a cool, you could actually have like multiple seasons if you want to really flesh it out. Yeah, definitely. What else maybe, we got here? Maybe like one season could have like a theme and it could be like a whole series of events. The next season is another catastrophe catastrophe or some, some shit like that. I don't know. It could be cool. Yeah. And they can get as wild as they want with that show and I'm oh, on yeah. board for it. Next we have Hawkeye. Um, another Disney Plus show starring Jer- Jeremy, excuse me, Jeremy Renner. We join Kevin Feige on stage to share more details about the show, which will introduce Kate Bishop, who has been hitting her mark in the Marvel comics. I think Marvel that's Studios the main reason guy. to watch this is to see her and what she's going to do. For sure. And I know she was, of course, featured in Endgame at the beginning and mm-hmm. uh, partly in the middle there. Um, so it's cool yeah. to, to kind of see Hawkeye passing the bow to his daughter, I guess. Yeah. Um, I still don't I, feel I, like I she had a, a lot of Kate good Bishop moments. Is, is his daughter. I'm pretty sure it is. Yes. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, this has me extremely excited. Thor Love and Thunder. Yes. This is the best announcement, by the way. Another Thor. Yeah. Um, I love the logo for that, too. It looks incredible. It looks very He-Man or like yep. <laughs> um, like Flash Gordon or something. Yeah. Um, it says... Natalie Portman will return for Marvel Studios Love or Thor Love and Thunder, joining stars Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson. Taika Waititi returns as director, which is huge for me because he killed mm-hmm. it with Ragnarok. Yep. And he confirmed that Jane Foster will become the mighty Thor, goddess of thunder. That is a huge news. Yeah, that is wild, man. I bet I wouldn't I thought, be surprised. I thought she was done. Like, yeah, me too. I thought she and said honestly, that. dude, I, I feel like I can't remember if she just bailed on the MCU. She's like, I'm tired of being one, just being like the scientist damsel in distress, not doing much. But also yeah. that was still when the MCU was relatively young and yet to hit really it's, I mean, it's always had mainstream appeal, but really like figure out their formula and like how their characters were going to be. Yeah. Cause she so was I in can, two, right? Not three. She was in uh yeah, one and two, uh, Thor one and two. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at all if her agent and her, her in, in particular were like, look, if I'm going to come back, it's got to be in a huge way. Otherwise, I'm not doing this. <laughs> I think this she is, got her way. <laughs> yeah, probably. the I, That may not be the case, but I would assume that like, she's a very prominent, talented actress. I mean, she's done a lot of uh, mostly art house films that she's been doing in the past decade or so. But I heard she was really good in uh, Annihilation, which I haven't seen yet. I heard her action scenes are really, really strong. Yeah. And uh, I, I really liked um, <laughs> Black Swan. I know we joke about Black Swan a lot, but that movie is pretty good. Um, what's that? That old man on the bus that's like oh, licking yeah. his lips or something. There, we for some <laughs> as effed up as that is, like our group of friends when we saw that thought it was like one of the funniest things we'd ever seen. Yep. But um, her returning to the MCU is cool. I really like Natalie Portman as an actress, and I think she taking on the mantle of Thor as the goddess of thunder is pretty awesome. I completely agree. I'm excited to see uh, old Chris Hemsworth get in action. I want to yeah. see him back in shape. You know. Totally. Yeah, I want to see see Chris or at least Thor in, in his prime again. Um, I was going to say, because uh, I really feel like they they really established, like, Thor was just getting excellent in Ragnarok, and of course that carried into Infinity War and Endgame, and it, it would suck if they're like, all right, we got to put Thor to bed now, like he had his time, even though we, we kind of figured him out there at the, the tail end of the Infinity Saga. Mm-hmm. I love that he's going to be in Phase 4, and then he's back, and Taika Waititi's returning, and I feel like after the success of Ragnarok, I think Kevin Feige is going to let Taika Waititi go completely insane with this movie. Yeah. 
Um, someone else made a good point, which we'll talk about Blade here in a second, which got me really excited that now that Blade is going to exist in the MCU that introduces vampires into the mix. And someone yeah. made a great point. Like, what if the vampires from What We Do in the Shadows, which is also directed by Taika Waititi, were featured in Blade or Thor or something? That would be interesting. I think that'd be so <laughs> good. Like, I think it'd be cool because Blade is part vampire. and I'm pretty sure he has vampire allies as well in his comic line. And I'd love if one of them had a cameo as one of his allies or just someone he passes by. It would be so funny. Mm. The um, only thing I know about Blade is the first movie that came out. I know there was at least another one that came out. Back in the day. Back yeah, I, know, the I think there's, there's three Blade films. I think there's Blade, Blade 2, and Blade Trinity as Ryan Reynolds in it. Oh, God. Was that good? Um, <laughs> if Deadpool... Uh, it has some good action scenes, but no, it's not a good movie at all. <laughs> um, I mean, Ryan Reynolds is really good in it. When I think but, of old Ryan Reynolds and comic book movies, I think of Green Lantern. <laughs> Green Lantern, and he was also Deadpool before he was actual Deadpool in X-Men Origins Wolverine, and it was just atrocious. <laughs> And they, they paid an homage to that in, uh, I think it was yeah. Deadpool. Um, that's also funny to think about. I mean, I wonder if Deadpool actually winds up in the MCU at some point, if he'll like say something about Blade and like how he was <laughs> in Blade back in the day or something with Wesley it, Snipes. It'd be cool to see a Deadpool Blade movie. I'd be up for that. Um, it, it, I don't know if, I assume, because the Blade movies, I've never read a Blade comic, but the Blade movies were also relatively um, campy. Um, so I don't know if they'll mm -hmm. take that same approach or make it overly serious because Mahershala Ali is mostly a dramatic actor and he's phenomenal in everything I've seen him in. So I think that's really cool that even after playing, what was his name, like Snakebite or, or Viper? What was his name in, in uh, um, what's that show? <laughs> it was on Netflix. Uh, not, not Iron Fist. Uh, Luke um, Cage. Luke, Luke Cage, Cage, yeah. What was his name? In the, he was, he the, was the villain. Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Cobra or something. Something with a snake. Let me look it up. Cornwall. No. <laughs> Luke Co Cage cast. Uh, sucks. Oh, I know I'm close, dude. He it's was uh, Cottonmouth. That's Cottonmouth, yeah. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame because first half of season one of Luke Cage was so awesome. I watched the second season. It was decent. <laughs> yeah, I heard it was not very good from yeah, many it was, people. It was okay. I'm still going to watch Jessica Jones season three, I think it I'm going to watch it too. I heard it's pretty good. Just to, um, just to say I've, missed, well, I've watched everything. Yeah, to see it through. I, yeah. I skipped out on season two of Iron Fist. Did you watch it? I did. It was just fine. It wasn't great. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was the show was always the weakest. Yeah, that show was always doomed. It's a shame what happened to Daredevil, though. Daredevil was so good. Yeah. And we'll never see that reimagined. Maybe with someone else, uh, I guess. If they bring... Uh, well, think about it this way. If Mahershala Ali, granted, he is much more of a renowned actor than uh, the gentleman who plays Daredevil. But as I think Kevin Feige made the joke, like, they're like, how did this happen? How did you know Mahershala Ali wind up as Blade? He's like, you know, when Mahershala Ali calls, we answer or something like that. <laughs> so I don't know if it was his idea. Like, look, Kevin, uh, I got screwed over as Cottonmouth and Luke Cage. I want to remain in the MC. Gr granted, people have said, like, you know, the Netflix division of Marvel was completely detached from Kevin Feige's Marvel. And I think Kevin Feige and even the showrunner of all those shows had, like, bad blood. So yeah. I think in Kevin's eyes those shows never had any impact whatsoever on the MCU, even though they often reference the MCU. Yeah. So I think Kevin's like, I don't even consider those shows canon. <laughs> so <laughs> you never existed as Cottonmouth in my eyes, so you're more than welcome to play Blade, which I think yeah. is great casting, because I think Blade is, from what I've seen, at least in the movies, is a really cool character. I like his backstory a lot. Um, and he's a vampire hunter, which is incredibly badass. Um, so true. I am really, really excited to see how that plays out. True, true, true. Someone shared that clip. I can't remember which Blade movie it is, but it's that <laughs> quote from Wesley Snipes where he's like, some motherfucker's always trying to ice skate uphill. And he like <laughs> does a spinning backflip kick and kicks like a needle into a vampire's head. It's hilarious. <laughs> but I'm, I don't know if they're going to cool. go. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to go that direction. They're over the but, top. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how it plays out, but I, I thought that announcement, the way the announcement too, was just really exciting. And mm -hmm. um, that was the, the one announcement where on Twitter I out loud was like, holy crap, that's so cool. Yeah. 
So I got really excited about that. I think we've covered all the Marvel stuff. Yeah. I, there's one thing I was kind of surprised about. I thought for sure there was going to be another Black Panther soon, but I guess oh. it's going to be delayed. That's right. I almost forgot. I'm glad you mentioned that. To follow up all the Phase 4 announcements, Kevin Feige also mentioned on stage that, and in a post-interview, we confirmed that they are not included in Phase 4. I assume it'll be Phase 5. Yeah. Fantastic Four is coming, and he said mutants are coming. But he did not say X-Men. So I don't know if they're going to intentionally call it Mutants or mm-hmm. forego the title X-Men. I don't know why. Um, but he said they are coming. So I, I assume more Spider-Man will come in Phase 5, too. Yeah. So And Guardians, obviously. Right. What's, yeah. uh, what's his, once Gunn is done with Suicide Squad? Yep, he did mention that. I feel like there was maybe one other thing he talked about. I can't remember what it was. But yeah, those are the big ones for sure, those big three. I think we have to have more Th- Hulk somewhere. Like, I don't know if he gets another movie. I'd love to see him get another movie or maybe a show on Disney Plus. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. I feel like that's some gnarly visual effects to pay for every episode Still on a streaming show. Better to do it on that than a movie. Yeah. I think he's, he, they figured out Thor, not Thor, uh, Hulk best served as a supporting character in all these other movies. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, agree. he can't like, last forever, though. Like, yeah. Like, just like the original Avengers. I definitely want more Professor Hulk because I thought he was awesome in Endgame. I love that. Agreed. So um, I think we're guaranteed to have him pop up here and there. Mm-hmm. I'm just excited to see like all these new shows come out and like there's going to be a brand new team. What are they going to be called? And who's going to be the leader? Who's going to step up and be the leader? Right. And there's got to be more Captain Marvel too. I'm sure we'll get that in Phase Five too. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he said that, too. Oh, did he? <laughs> I always forget about that, yeah. Did he say anything of, else? Well, I think that was all of it. I'm pretty sure that was all of it. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm pulling up our community questions here. We're about to jump into that. But okay. San Diego Comic-Con, uh, I didn't keep up with all of it, but all the Witcher stuff I saw and heard about and Marvel has me stoked, bro. Yeah, those Just were the flat ex- out exciting things that I saw, too. So I don't think we really missed anything significant. Um, yeah, I feel that way as well, Jacob. Um, I think I found at the top of the questions, but before I go into that, I desperately need something to drink. So I will be right back. I think you can stall for like 15 seconds. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what's up, guys? What's going on? You know, guys, it's, uh, it's 1150 PM at night. Here on the east coast of the U.S. And uh, I'm trying to be quiet in the house while we're doing this because everyone's sleeping. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys are enjoying this episode. We couldn't get it out at our usual time on Monday. But, you know, that's life for you. But we're still getting the episode in. We're putting in the work. And I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Now, back to the show. There we go. (laughs) You ready for some community questions, Jacob? I thought you'd never ask. Mm, we're there, Jacob. Going in together, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your continued support of this podcast and writing into the show to have us answer your questions live on air. If you want them read, sorry, my air came on. I'm concerned about that. Forgive me for the uh, lackluster audio this, this evening. Um, if you want your questions read live on the show, you can reach us in one of three places. You can email us at itsobviousgaming at gmail.com. You can tweet at us at obvious underscore gaming or submit your questions in the Ask IOG section of our Discord channel and always include the hashtag Ask IOG so that we know you want your questions read live on the podcast. All that out of the way, Mr. Bohangales, Kyle himself, writes in Jacob and says, Why, hello, fellas. I have surfaced from my grind dungeon, which can either be a video game or a sex thing. You know me, so I'm sure you know the answer. <laughs> I've been loving every second of it. The new Final Fantasy XIV expansion has landed, and having spent about 120 hours in this game the past two weeks to round out my total playtime to about 58 days, that's 1,394 hours. That is some sort of an accomplishment right there. Nice. I thought I'd played a lot of hours in Hunt, having like 215. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's now not only my favorite multiplayer game, but my favorite Final Fantasy. Managing to set a new standard for storytelling in MMOs and showing the potential they have for engrossing you in a world. It's also cool to see it sitting near the top of the highest rated games of the year on Metacritic. Gush aside, the team behind the marketing for the game have made some interesting choices for their advertising. I'm talking about the one and only Tom Holland and an ad training to be 
uh, The Warrior of Darkness. This ad reminded me of the Mr. T ad for World of Warcraft and got me wondering, if you guys could take one of your favorite games and create an ad for it, who would you cast? Stay absolutely dazzling and let me lick them nips. <laughs> With oh, love, bongles. This is on the spot. I wish I'd read this prior to the podcast because I could probably think of some killer ideas. But I'm going to think about it for a second. You got anything? No. I'm thinking right now. Hmm. I would have, if he was still with us, um, God rest his soul, Steve Irwin be the lead role in a Hunt Showdown ad. Like, crikey, look at that. It's like a meathead killing something. And he like wrestles a... uh, like a like a hellhound or something to the ground. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Talks about fighting monsters. That'd be pretty cool. I, I think it would be really cool to see um, cyberpunk really just nail it home with a Keanu Reeves cyberpunk trailer closer to release. Um, just do just like even like him dressed up as his character, just like doing something live action that just is ridiculous and funny. And I'd charming. be up for that. And, and charming in a way that only Keanu can do, you know. Um, I think that could be a cool idea. I'm into that. Uh, I would like um, to see that, Jacob. Yeah. Sorry. I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of some more here. This is, this is such a good question. I don't want to leave Kyle hanging with some yeah. mediocre answers. I'm rather proud know. of my Steve Irwin ad. I think that'd be great. <clears throat> Let's never think happen, of another of one. Well, what's another big name in pop culture right what now? What about Apex. Who who would fit Apex? Maybe so we need someone mm-hmm. uh pretty wild. Rambunctious, maybe. Yeah. Someone mm-hmm. that likes to get their hands dirty. Maybe like a, a Jack Black, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Black works, works in crazy. almost anything for me. <laughs> what was that? Uh, Jack Black works in almost anything for me. Yeah. So I think Jack Black would be pretty suitable actually for Apex. Have you watched his YouTube channel? I've seen a little bit of it. I know he did something with PewDiePie recently. Yeah, he was doing like a fundraiser for something, playing Minecraft. Um, but yeah, I, th- I mean, yeah, you could put Jack Black in anything and he would make it entertaining. Yeah, I, I'm drawing blanks here. Keanu well, Reeves was good of, enough. Yeah, Keanu works for me. I'm proud of Steve Irwin and I think Jack Black would be just fine in an Apex ad. There you okay, go. Well, thank you for your question. I'm glad to hear you're enjoying Final Fantasy and your enthusiasm definitely sparks my interest because I have dabbled in that game a bit. But I never really gave it the time it deserved for me to get invested. Um, of course, the time I have to invest in an MMO is pretty sparse. Non-existent. I think that's why I've catered primarily to like multiplayer games and shooters in the last six months when I've had time because they're kind of bite-sized experiences. Yeah. Um, but I will drop everything, of course, for Cyberpunk when it comes out. And, of course, Fall in Order when it comes out. So yeah, 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 yeah. Story-driven games like that, I will always make time for when I'm incredibly excited, but... I feel like Final Fantasy, I, I owe it to myself to give it a real chance at some point. Because even Preston has is, is <laughs> reminded me, even though we joke about it all the time, how I was pretty... I felt like, for me, Final Fantasy XV was pretty me- mediocre. But I can recognize why it's so praised and why people love it so much. Um, it was just bad timing for me when I played it. I mean, I, w- I wouldn't say like XV is the most praised thing in the world. I think it's fine in some areas, but it definitely lacks in other areas, which really hold it back. But I think it's a fine game. Yeah. And it's not I, like I look back on it, I'm like, man, that was just a fantastic game, like 10 out of 10. No, yeah. like I, I look back, look at, I look back at it and I'm like, you know, that was a fine game. I, I'm not, I'm not going to play it again, but you know, I'll remember my times with it. I may be one of the few people on earth that proved you can beat that game at level 30. <laughs> Barely, but you can beat it. I was shocked that you actually beat it because I was at like level 50 something and I struggled, man. Yeah. I mean, I talk, I'm talking, Jacob, the time it took for you to beat that giant turtle beast in a boss battle is what it took for me to beat like a normal boss in the game at level Dude, 30. I cannot believe that I did that. I did that. You platinumed it, didn't stupid, you? Yeah, I platinumed that game. I did that stupid turtle boss fight. It took me that like literally awesome. two hours to kill him. Like I just, I, you know, you remember that warp ability where you could like teleport? Uh, yeah. I would, yeah. I just spam that literally everywhere on him, and it did like maybe a hundred damage every time I hit him. He had like millions of health, <laughs> so it was just doing nothing. That's all I did. Yeah, I'm. Mean, that's. Some but very I cheesed it and I got it done. Um, it's very inspiring dedication, Jacob, but that's something I would probably refuse to do myself. Yeah, looking back, it just kind of seems pathetic. <laughs> well, Jacob, you had the time, you wanted that trophy, and you have the trophy to prove it, that you invested that time for a digital trophy. 
I guess. Yeah. Like, what's that trophy doing now? Like, I'm I'm not getting on PlayStation anymore. <laughs> I know. Um, I there. only platinum games, like I've said, that I am just totally crazy about. Um, mm-hmm. So not really like I have to complete it to feel like I feel accomplished just because I'm like, I like this game so much. I want to invest the time to like earn every trophy. Not really. It's like a statement per se, but just like I feel good. I did every possible thing I could do in this game. I love so much. That's how yeah. I feel about trophies. Exactly. Which I think has prevented me from pulling my hair out over certain games. Like if I encounter, even if there have been rare occasions where I'll play a game I love that I encounter a trophy that's just so asinine. I'm like, forget it. I'm not going for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I let it go. Um, next question comes from Big Jake 23 it says, hello, I have a very serious question. Is there a perfect game, like an actual game that you think is a 10 out of 10, a game that you can't think of even the tiniest thing wrong with it? Like the whole game, if it included, I'm already laughing about something I have to say about this. Like the whole game, if it included multiplayer, I can think of two God of War, PS4 and Thief, of course. <laughs> Love yes, to hear your thoughts, everyone's amen to that. Um, Glad to hear Preston's sweet voice again. Love you guys. Peace. Love yep, you, Big Jake. Thanks for the question. Oh, yeah. Preston, by the way, is out of town again. I'm sorry. Wait, <laughs> not he's mentioning not here? that at the beginning. No, he's out of town. Oh. I, I don't think he'll be quiet. gone all week, though. I think he'll be gone at, uh, at like mid, mid-week or so. So he'll be back next week for the podcast, I'm pretty sure. Oh. So, so he had to tie up some loose ends at his, his job he was at. Oh. Um, let's see. Uh, perfect game. Um, what I was laughing about is that there have been multiple games I've played in my life where 90% of it, I'm like, this is unbelievable how good it is. Like, I am loving this. And then all of a sudden I'll fight like an enemy or a boss that pisses me the hell off. And every time I scream the same thing, I'm like, this is exactly why there are never any perfect games. I say something like, uh, there's always something that ruins a perfect game. And it's always like a boss that really pisses me off that does that. Um, But I think, realistically speaking, for me, I know this is incredibly subjective. It's going to be subjective for everyone. But for me, I think Spider-Man on PS4 is downright flawless for the most part. Hmm. I think a lot of people would agree with you. And I I realize that going forward, I think there are several aspects of the game that that can improve, of course. Um, but I think for what it is, I think it is perfect. Mm-hmm. Like story, loved it. Gameplay, incredible. I, I get the argument that like it can get monotonous swinging around the city doing all the side stuff. But I love that because, again, at the end of the day, that was the Spider-Man game I had always dreamed of. And it delivered in every way for me. So that's why I think for me it was perfect. Yeah, I get that. Um, and I'm not blinded by... Um, my love for the character or nostalgia or anything like that because I've I've let, that game's like festered in my mind for well over a year now or or coming coming up on a year, yeah. Um, so I've had time to stew on that even not having played it like I did when it first came out, and I still feel that way. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that completely. Um, I don't think there is a perfect game, obviously, because <laughs> it's just not possible. Everyone's idea of perfect is. Different from one another, therefore, there is no blanket perfect anything. Um, Having that said, there are three games that are at the top of my list of all time that I consider very special and perfect to me in my own way. And those three games are one of which you've mentioned here, Big Jake, God of War PS4. That's one of my favorite games of all time. I think it is very well paced incredible story um incredible world building and incredible characters i love it to death um kingdom hearts 2 love that game too it has a lot of flaws yes but it is a very special game to me and it is a 10 out of 10 to me for many many reasons which i'm not going to sit here and talk about because no one really cares about how much i care about kingdom hearts 2 and um the final one is world of warcraft not well, see wow's tricky because it, it fluctuates right like you know some people like different portions of the game other people like a different time when they played the game yada 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 my experiences with the game and growing up with it are why i think it's a perfect game I mean, I, I mean, right now it's having a little a little trouble it's having some competition it's uh you know they're going through some growing pains <laughs> growing pains but it's like a 
what is it? Uh, how, how old is the game? It came out in what was it? Oh, one. I don't even remember when it came out. Bro, I'm not sure. I need to look it up. Actually, I don't want to be wrong. Forgive me. It came out in 04. Yeah, I thought it was 01, but it was 04. So that is 15 years. It'll be 15 years in November. That's insane. That's crazy. Anyway, um, yeah, I, 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 I consider those three games perfect 10 out of 10s in my mind. And uh, yeah, I, I actually do intend on like going back to WoW here pretty soon because they've had some content released in the last half a year that I haven't played. So I'm excited to jump back in and see what's happened. But I just got to find the time, you know. I get that. You're going to try WoW Classic? Did you mention that? Yeah, I do intend on trying that. It comes out next month. I think it's like halfway through the month. I'll jump in. I don't know if I'll stick with it, but I'll definitely play it. See, see what it's like to be back in the uh, early 2000s. Yeah, I look forward back to Back when things were just handed to you. <clears throat> yeah. You had, to, you had to bust your ass to even get a level in the game. I bet. Let alone like a good piece of gear. But uh, yeah, dude. Well, give a few shout outs here from the community. Fribe says Ratchet and Clank 2 going commando. That is a great game. I love that game. Specifically going commando. Yeah, I've never played any of them with the exception of the PS4 remaster, the first one. Dude, I have going commando on PS2 if you want to borrow it. And I, I have, have a PS2. PS2 and four. Oh, you I got do. a PS2. Okay, that's tempting. It's good. I'm waiting to see if Insomniac has like a B team that's working on another Ratchet and Clank remaster because I love that first one so much. It'd be cool, but I wouldn't uh, count my. Uh, what's the saying? <laughs> you count my uh, gems. What does he collect? His, 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 his no. bolts. His bolts. His bolts. Yeah. His nuts. <laughs> Don't couch your nuts, son. <laughs> Hukimato says Burnout 3. I loved Burnout 3 back in the day. Frosty this guy Shake Second. Burnout going 3 commando. is a perfect game. Well, that's, Burnout that's 3. what they like. Okay. You said everyone's definition of perfect was different, Jacob, and now you're judging their choice. But a How racing game? You? Come on. Girth Brooks says it's hard for me to say a game is 10 out of 10 because so many games are trying to do so many different things for different people. But as far as a sports game that tries to emulate the feeling of an actual sport, I always like Skate. Amen, man. The Skate series. I never played uh, Skate. I, 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 skate 2 is my favorite. If I could just play any Skate game again, I'd just love to have Skate 2 backwards compatible because I'd play that all the time. When I say all the time, I mean like I dabble in it like I dabble in Spider-Man. Like I'll go swing around in Spider-Man when I just want to feel those mechanics again for like five minutes. Um, I would totally run around and skate. Excuse me. Skate around and skate. Um, yeah, there's more conversation going on in here. But I was, I was nice to hear everyone's thoughts on what they think the perfect game is. And of course, we extend that question to the rest of the community who's yet to answer it. I'd love to hear from you. Fireseed writes in and says, Howdy, boys. Been a while since I wrote, so here it goes. What is the most moving moment you have had with a game, with gaming over the years that really stands out to you? Mine is most definitely Gears of War 2, fighting through hordes of locusts to rescue Dom's wife, finally making it down and busting open that capsule to see Maria looking normal, and then for the rea reality to set in that she was a shell of a person and dies in Dom's arms. I really felt for Dom in that moment, and the icing on the cake was when Phoenix places his hand on Dom's shoulder. It was perfect. P.S. You guys, uh, you guys are the highlight of my weekend. I love the podcast forever, and grateful for you guys are still doing it. Cheers. I, I botched that sentence so bad, Fireseed. Forgive me, man. Uh, cheers, dudes. Fireseed, thank you so much for your question and continued support of the podcast, man. We really appreciate it. And I, I uh, like that moment a lot as well from Gears 2. I think Gears 2 is definitely my favorite Gears game to date. Um, campaign, multiplayer. Actually, I think Gears 3's multiplayer sort of beats out Gears 2 for me, but Gears 2's campaign is by far my favorite. Um, I remember many, many moments from that, and that that moment is definitely moving for sure. I think to second that, I think Dom's death, I know we're dropping gear spoilers left and right. I don't think too many people care, but Dom's death, his sacrifice, I should say, in Gears 3 was moving for me. One, because... I always liked Dominic Santiago as a character, especially post-Gears 2, where you get to know him a bit better. And I remember Gears 2 was definitely a character study on 
the entire main cast, you know, like Coltrane and Baird and all them. Um, she got to know everyone a bit better. And I think because of that, going into Gears 3, I had a much more care for what might happen to these characters. And his sacrifice, on top of the fact that they used uh, Mad World um, from the original trailer over his death, made it especially moving because it was like a dose of nostalgia and also emotion. <laughs> so yeah. that moment was really strong for me. Um, Another one that just immediately comes to mind is the last 10 seconds of The Last of Us. Yeah. Um, when Joel just outright lies to Ellie's face and her reaction to that. And just when it cuts to black is just so powerful to me. Mm -hmm. And that was also, like a gut you punch. know, in the beginning, that's an emotional moment at the very beginning of the game. Oh, yeah, especially. Yeah, that's another one. I mean, there, there are several moments in the game that stick out to me. But yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. another good shout out is the the beginning is just show, so shocking. Yeah. <laughs> and also, the the end to like the beginning and end of that game hit me like a freight train. I'll never forget that. And I'm, I can only hope that the sequel has moments like that as well. Mm -hmm. Because I know Naughty Dog is their their animation, their presentation is just unbelievable. But at the end of the day, for Last of Us in particular, I think it's really going to come down to the the story moments for me because that's what yeah. even beyond like the really cool gameplay and like amazing world they established and incredible fidelity even for its time at least and animation and stuff. Um, the story stood out well above that for me. Um, so that's all I can hope for in the sequel. <clears throat> yeah. Um, what else kind of stands out to you, Jacob? I could probably name a hundred things, but I want to hear if there's anything else that sticks out to you. Sure. Um, I remember Uncharted Four being somewhat emotional for me because I'm a, I'm a sucker for like relationships and content. Like, if I'm like watching a show or I'm watching a movie or playing a game that like I see a really like loving and fun relationship being built or you know playing out before me, I I'm like all in it. Like I I want it to see how it plays out and I want to you know experience it for myself because I don't have one for my own. <laughs> But um, no, I love the the relationship between um Nate and uh uh oh my God, what's her name? Is it? Wait, what's her name? <laughs> in uh, Uncharted Four, again? Uncharted uh, Four, uh, Nathan Drake and who, who's this chick? Uh, it's not um, Elena, is it? Yeah, it's Elena. <laughs> right? Is it Elena? Wait. Oh uh, my so God. I'm, really, I'm sitting here talking about how emotional when we turn the mics on all names leave my mind relationship is and I can't even remember what it's called <laughs> or what her name is um I'm sure I, it's uh um why can't I I'm trying to look it up uh cast Elena yeah it's Elena Fisher oh okay yeah there we go okay sorry <laughs> is it is it yeah, it's Elena. <laughs> All right. And not only that, but like also with uh, his brother, um, Sam, in the game is it's a, it's a really cool relationship. Like, yeah, it was kind of weird, like how he just popped up in the fourth game. Um, Troy Baker anyway, but I, I thought it was a really cool relationship to experience. Um, the death of Varian Rin in World of Warcraft in the Legion expansion was it was heart wrenching a little bit to me because I because I he, he was my king, Garrett. He was my king all the way through. Wow, man. And then he just, he died, dude. And it was just emotional because not, not only, not like because he had like a lot of great moments necessarily in the game, but just because of who, what he stood for, for the Alliance, the faction that I played for. And also like the legacy that he left behind and how they kind of tie that into the story and the son that he left behind, who is now the, uh, the new king of the Alliance. So it's just nerdy shit like that. I, I, uh, I really have a lot of fond memories of uh, spending time in the throne room in front of uh, King Ren just doing goofy ass shit. With, yeah, uh, I appreciate uh, <laughs> you sharing that, Jacob. It sounds of really course. near and dear to your heart. Of course. And I think I had another one, but it's uh, it's escaping me, unfortunately. I had it all thought out in my head, but it's gone. No. Oh. Let me think for a second. Memorable moving moments. Hmm. I thought God of War had many moving moments. The new one? Yeah. Yeah. Several. Yeah, it did. The, the, uh, that's, the still, that's, that's fresh with spoilers, though, so we got to avoid it. But Sure, sure. <laughs> all of the, that, that whole game had, like, at least 10. <laughs> I love that game so much. Yeah I, I, yeah, I remember one moment in particular that, like, really got me. 
Let me name a few real quick before I forget them. Um, okay. I won't. I won't dwell on because I've mentioned them probably ten different times on this podcast over the years. But um, the ending of Halo Three will forever be moving to me. I love it. Um, also, the ending to Kingdom Hearts Two, like the last ten seconds of that game, make me cry every time I see it. <laughs> um, uh, oh yeah, Kingdom Hearts Three. The ending is it's it's a uh, tugs on the strings, man. Oh really? Especially if you're attached to a lot of the characters from the games, man. Whew. Yeah. It gets you. That's good to know. So if you ever want to play it, I can let you borrow it. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. This is going to make people laugh, but I feel like I'm the only person that's ever been affected this strongly by it. But the ending to the New Donk, New Donk City world and Super oh, Mario yeah, Odyssey yeah. made me ball like a baby, dude. <laughs> that was so emotional to me because one, Jump Up Superstar is just a, an emotional song to me for some mm-hmm. reason. Like sometimes the happiest songs are the saddest to me. Not sad, but like just they make me cry for some reason. Um, but seeing Mario go from like, because he does it the whole game, but that in- sequence in particular when it's like a celebration of Mario and a celebration of video games when Mario's going from modern 3D Mario back to classic Mario back and forth playing this level. I think I was overcome with emotion because we were there for that time when games were like that and to see what they've become. And like you're like going back and forth and that <laughs> that joyful song is playing. Something about it hit me, dude, and I just started crying while I was playing that. I was, I was like joyfully crying, tears streaming down my face. <laughs> playing Super Mario For Odyssey. a little plumber, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think it's mostly because Mario was also one of the first games I ever played in my life. So just to see how far it was it was it had come. And I was playing it in the palm of my hands too on Switch. It was just so emotional to me. Yeah. So uh that was very moving. <laughs> I'm glad I remember that one because it was huge for me. I know what Preston's is. What's that? The first time you saw Spider-Man at E3. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Um, yeah, I'll never forget that. It's a shame we weren't a YouTube channel at the time because I kid you not, I have never, not even in a movie, seen someone react like that. Yeah. It was astounding. Like, I could not believe it. Like, he um, just yelped continuously. <laughs> like, screamed, cried, like, jumped out, like... I, he didn't even jump off the couch. He like jumped into the corner of the yeah, room where the couch was, <laughs> as if he was Spider Man. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That was. Uh, and talk about reaction videos. That'd be one of those like historic reaction videos on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um. I know Preston was also moved by the end of uh, Red Dead Redemption. So, mm. first one, not Re- Revolver, obviously, but Redemption with John Marston. Redemption too has a emotional ending too. Yeah, I don't even think, uh, spoiler alert, the death of uh, Arthur Morgan is emo- as emotional to me as his sacrifice is. Like when he chooses to, I mean, he's going to die anyway, obviously, because of the tuber- tuberculosis. But yeah. when he chooses to ride back to camp and sacrifice his life for the rest of his friends, uh, that was really yeah. moving to me. Especially the song that plays. Mm-hmm. Um, it had a great music in that game. Yeah, the soundtrack oh now, or at least some of it, with like the main artists from the games, are is on Apple Music and Spotify. If you're interested, ooh, so I might indulge. Oh yeah. Well, Fire Seed Man, I could go on all day. I could probably do a whole podcast about moving moments, but those are the big ones that stand out to me for now. Squishy writes in and says, "All right, I'm actually on my. I'm, I'm going to actually read this as if." Uh, I am slightly intoxicated because there's a few typos in here. I'm just going to include them. (laughs) Squishy says, I'm actually on my drunken rants now and I'll save you the boredom of myself. But I thought of a great question while lying in someone else's bed in someone else's house. (laughs) What is the coolest shot glass you own? If you don't own any cool ones, boo. (laughs) Boo. Personally, I have two shotgun shells with the Doom logo that act as shot glasses. That is so badass. I'm jealous of that. Um, I would include photos, but I am fucked. <laughs> I'm sorry, Garrett. <laughs> I'm going to read this with a, bunch of, house. with a bunch of AUG typos. Maybe autocorrect help me, uh, help me on this one or help me this one time. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I am fucked. I hope you recovered well, Squishy. Yeah, I hope you lived. I'm pretty sure she lived. Looks like it based on the... Uh, rest of the stuff in this thread but um I mean, those shotgun shells i bet look so cool i'd love to see those um i don't actually have any cool shot glasses i actually only have one shot glass and it's the one from zach's wedding Boo. yeah <laughs> you have your shot glass from zach's wedding don't you no i never uh i didn't grab it at the end of the night 
Dude, Jacob, what's wrong with you, man? I know. Like, I think like several of us left ours. I think like me, Evan, and Elliot left ours. You guys goofed, man. I still got mine. It's very special to me. I mean, I don't do shots very often, but just something about having it at Zach's wedding was special to me. So all of our shot glasses had our initials on it because we were all Zach's groomsmen. I think there was like 11 Mm -hmm. of us total, wasn't there? Or nine? Yeah, there was a lot. (laughs) Yeah, it was a it was a gigantic cast of a wedding (laughs) but i really really loved uh like you know the bachelor party and and the days leading up to zach's wedding the wedding itself was just awesome mostly mostly because zach's one of our best friends and like that's the first time in my life one of my close friends has gotten married so that's like a really big life event and to be a part of it like that was special to me so yeah 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 i value that shot glass that i will probably never drink from but i'm gonna keep it I don't have a cool shot glass but i have one from breckenridge which uh was a very fun trip and i have used it approximately zero times mm. it's collecting dust in my my desk right next to me actually but, why'd you pick it up then uh just i don't know i thought it'd be cool just to have a little tiny souvenir just to say i went no, nothing no other reason than that and right. just to have and i don't own any shot glasses so now i do <laughs> yeah well fair enough jacob so sorry i can't do any more justice to your question squishy well, Jacob, uh, we have reached the end of... No, 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 we haven't. We have one more. It's a lengthy one from Ace of Spades. You up for it? Hold on. Let me, let me see what this question is. Okay. Because um, I can save it if you need to, because I actually have to get up in like five hours. Let's save it for next week. Okay. Just in case Ace. we don't have enough. We'll be back, man. Um, apologize for leaving you out here at the tail end, but it is uh, 1220 a.m. I have to leave for the airport at 5. Oh, God, so, dude. You're insane. Yeah, but I'm going to go get me some grub of some sort because I have not eaten anything but popcorn and a strawberry milkshake today. <laughs> I gotcha. When is this going to yeah. go live, this episode? Um, as soon as possible. I'm going to edit it. Oh, you're going to stay up then? Yeah. And since it's audio only, insane, it'll, it'll, I'll, I'll blow through it really quickly. Okay. But yeah, upload that sucker as soon as possible. For sure, dude. Um, you, would but, you like to sign us out? Yeah, I'd love to sign us out. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you so very much for your, for your continued support. Um Thank you to all of you who watched the Gears Let's Play. I know Gears is probably the most exciting game in the world to you, but just the support of the video is much appreciated. And we, of course, will uh, be putting out more Let's Plays in the coming months with games releasing. I know Press and I are going to do some stuff for Youngblood, I believe. And um, maybe if we jump back into a way out, we'll dabble in that a bit. That's not new, but I think it's pretty funny to watch. I mean, Press had a really good time with that. But, of course, like we said, all the games coming out this fall, we're going to do videos for. And um, I'd love to join Jacob on some streams in the coming weeks, if that's possible. And, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the episode. Please let us know your thoughts down below on uh, YouTube if you're watching on YouTube or on Discord, of course, and uh, answer any community questions that stick out to you. I'd love to hear your 10 out of 10 game if it even exists for you. Um, of course, no judgment for me. I can't guarantee that for Jacob. <laughs> but <laughs> Oh, I'm judging. Um, we look forward to talking to you guys on Discord and comments and uh, social media in general. We all hope you have a uh, just wonderful, incredibly blessed week and uh, play some fun games. Have great life experiences and just overall, just everything goes well. I just wish it upon you. <laughs> yes. And also, if you like the uh, video version on YouTube, please be sure to like it. Leave a comment if you're willing. And also maybe share it on a, a social platform of your choosing. If you are feeling kind that day, we would appreciate the shout out. But uh, yeah. thank you guys again for tuning in this week. And we will be back next week, hopefully talking about some new games that are coming out. Yes, sir. But until next time, guys. Bye. (laughs) Zia. (laughs) Zia. (laughs) I wasn't ready for the bye. Bye. Bye.